Emmy boxes or electronic man machine interface. I'm gonna talk about these today. There's not a lot of information about them online, but uh, I researched all I could find about them and I want to share the information with you because it's not that easy to find and I think it's worth uh, sharing it with the world. This interface uh, basically was made by Motorola engineers as a way to communicate uh, with Motorola phones back in the 90s because the only way to, to communicate with them was through serial or parallel ports and their speed was pretty slow so they made an electronic man-machine interface for faster speeds and also a way to communicate with the microcontroller inside the phone so first I found this board uh, that is inside here on the internet in the United States on eBay it was sold as unknown boards uh, any board and I bought it, I, I wasn't sure that's what it was, but I bought it, and, uh, here's some pictures about it, here. That's how I found it, and uh, I ended up putting it into this box here. It's quite large, but that's, this is the only box that I found that was so wide and long, so I could fit that in there. When I got that one, uh, it had a very old version of software on it, and it wasn't really good for anything because it was like it came straight from the Motorola factory, right? So it wasn't. It had a very old firmware on it, and it didn't really do much. So to upgrade that, I had I, I took me a long time to find the the newer firmware version. Had to dig through archives on the internet to find it. But it was on a flash chip, and the only way to flash that was to put it into one of these phones. So this Ericsson. A1018S uh, uses the same flash chip as the one that's on this uh, Emmy board. So I took the flash chip from there, soldered it onto this phone, used the programmer made for this phone to put the uh, flash firmware from, for this uh, Emmy board into this phone and then put the flash chip back into here. So I got the latest uh, firmware for it and I made it work as you can see here it's got two uh, phone ports uh, RJ45 they're both the same it doesn't really matter it makes no difference which one you put in it's got a parallel port here at the front but it doesn't work through parallel if you put a parallel cable here nothing's gonna happen you need one of these adapters which is a uh, parallel to serial converter so you put that in there and then you put your serial cable, cable here and then it's going to uh, look for COM1 on the computer when it's when you're using programs for uh, the classic ME 2D or the old uh, first version M. So it's an on off switch here 9 volts uh, these ones can work on on low voltage more on that later but this one requires 9 volts and uh, well I'll, de I'll demonstrate the software for that later on this one this is a row ME2 this one this was originally made by Motorola but then later on people made like simplified versions of of this like smaller ones that worked through parallel. The way this one worked, if you wanted to flash a phone, you would first put the flash onto the RAM, it's got 16 megabytes of RAM, and then the program will take the flash 
from RAM and push it onto the phone. The transfer wasn't direct from the computer to the phone. This was good if you had multiple phones to do of the same kind. So if you wanted to flash multiple uh, phones of the same model, you would put the flash onto the RAM. It would take longer. But then once it was on the RAM, you could flash the phones much faster through the RJ45 port and uh, the firmware would stay on the RAM. With these ones, they were slower for flashing. At the beginning, they were only good for like unlocking. It was very, very basic. But in time, uh, the software for these developed to the point that uh, these now are much better than this in terms of uh, functions and you know what you can do with them. But more on that later. First, I found this on a Polish website. I wasn't sure what it was, but then I bought it. It took me forever to, to figure out how to make it work, but it works. Later on, I made this one myself. I found uh, the schematics for it online. Uh, this, they're pretty much the same. The, the components of these ones, this one is a bit different. This one's a simpler version. But this one works even without any power. It takes power from the printer cable. But here's, here's some photos of the inside of this one here. And on this one, you can actually look inside it. Yeah, so I printed out this PCB board and then put the components on myself. The central chip for that one, this one, and this one is a BIC 43808. This one there that you can find in Motorola Flare models. Like this one here. These were never available for sale, so if you wanted to build one of these, you had to strip this one and then take the chip from the main board and put it here, along with an EPROM with the command that will make this the master chip and the chip inside the phone you want to work with, the slave chip, and then the communication would come in. So it doesn't really matter what kind of version of EPROM you have on this as long as it makes this chip master and the phone chip a slave. And um, for this, for powering these, you can use one of these 2.1 millimeter jack cables. Uh, this one's just standard for this one and the original Amidroid board the positive and negative poles here were inverted so if you plug one of these in without knowing you could fry the board but luckily it had the diode there so that protected it all right so let's put this back together all right this can work with uh, 5 to 12 volts, you can just plug this into your computer or get a DC adapter, plug it in there. I modified this to be the sensor positive, but as I said, originally it was the other way around. But So to use the same cable for all of these, I made all of them be uh, sensor positive. This one works with parallel printer cable again. I have these for sale and clone and test cards as well. If anyone's interested, check the link below. And the last one, this is the most recent one I made. This uh, Amidroid board. This was hard to make. I made it myself, but I found the schematics for it online. But I couldn't, I couldn't make it work with um, 43E04 chip. So I had to find a 43E07 chip and that worked. 
I I paid someone to make the gerber files to print out the PCB, right? Because I'm not very good with uh, with the board development software. So this is the original uh, project. He sent me the files. I sent the files to the factory. The factory printed out the board for me. It arrived, but it didn't work. So obviously there were some mistakes on the project. It took me two weeks to to debug this board. Uh, I can see I, I done some corrections here. Replace the chip. See it's missing from here because now it's it's in there. But yeah, I, I made the board work. The difference between this and that is originally this project, whoever built this Emidroid board, uh, made the RJ45 port in mirror, right? So all the pins are the other way around. So if this was 5 volts, the first one was 5 volts originally on all of these, now it's the last one here and ground this on the other side so here's uh here's the pinout for the original emidroid board here and here's the pinouts for all of these here all right so what's different about this one uh on this one you can see there's a couple of switches here if you have, if you made the cable that is connected to audio out pin of the phone, if you press this button here, it will turn the it will turn the phone on and off. And this one here is for the test point. See this one here. Here's the probe that I made for it plug the probe in there if you have a phone with the version uh, 14 especially uh, v50s motorola v50s a lot of them had version 14 on them if you want to unlock those phones or change the serial number on them if you try to do any of that you're gonna get a, wa a warning after that saying the phone has been tampered and practically becomes unusable and to work on those phones, you need to downgrade the software to version 13. And to do that, you need to touch uh, the test point to a specific part on the main board of that phone. And then start the procedure. And to do that, I made this probe here. So you touch it on your phone. And you see this switch here, it says test point on. If you keep that pressed, it gives voltage to the probe and then you can start the operation. So, and uh, there's a different program for this. I'll, I'll demonstrate that later. So what do you need to use these? First of all, you need a computer with uh, DB25 printer ports with EPP mode I will show you that in a minute and if you want to use the ME2D you need a serial uh, port here RS233 you will need a serial cable for the ME2D make sure all the wires are in there all the wires are necessary for this communication and you need a DB25 printer cable, not a no modem cable because those have two wires that are switched inside. So you want a one to one cable. So pin one goes to pin one, pin two to pin two, and so on. So one to one parallel cable. First, I have to make sure the parallel port is in EPP mode. So enter your BIOS. Let's see, 
advanced LPT port you see output only bidirectional EPP ECP so you want EPP modes on if you have a computer with Windows 98 uh, that will work just fine if you don't that's not a problem you can make a bootable USB drive and then set that USB drive uh, as a priority so it boots from that and put MS-DOS on that and all of these programs uh, well the DOS ones will work fine with any system any computer as long as you've got an EPP port so let's start Windows in the meantime plug this in we'll start with the ME2D so we got your DC power supply here set to 9 volts with the tip the center being positive plug that in and the serial cable will go into this adapter here. You can see here there's three LEDs. The first one is for power. The second is if a phone is detected and connected. And the third one is for uh, activity at the port. So any data transfer that will blink. All right. So let's turn this on. The power LED is on. We have a few phones here to play with today. We've got this lovely StarTac model. And we got a Slim Light model. And also a 7200 model. We're going to work on that one later. There's five main cables that uh, you need to work on these phones. It may be a fifth one for this type of connector here. I just, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't tried yet. I need to find a connector like that. So you got this one here. This one wasn't officially sold by anyone. This is for this type of connectors here i made this from a headphone jack uh, from a headphone connector that i had for these phones here i thought i'd give it a try and yeah it worked so plug it in there plug it in there so that worked so you've got this connector for uh, the flare the uh, talk ahead all the models that have this type of plug you have this you've got this connector here for the T192 model you put the battery in here and then you clip this on the back of the phone you've got this connector here for StarTac phones and Motorola Compli and all of that there's lots of phones with that type of connector. There is this, which is for some time time port models, D160, D170, D560. Got that. And you got this other one that clips uh, at the back for some other time port models. So five main cables, but today we'll play with the star pack one. So plug the cable in and plug the phone in like so. Let's leave it here for now. Now let's see about the software program. There are many programs that you can use with these. I'll show you some examples. 
This is an uh, old one by Andromeda, but this this worked before I replaced the chip inside the the MSD. The program activated the box, uh, turned the phone on. You see it's connected there, but. If you try to connect to it, it says Emmy not detected. With the old firmware version that was on here, uh, this program worked, but it couldn't access any of the information like uh, network codes, special code. Uh, it couldn't access it because the firmware was so old and probably didn't have uh, access to that part of the EPROM. So, this was unusable and the firmware inside there was unusable for my purposes. So I had to replace that. And after that, this program no longer works with the newest firmware for that. But if you have an old board, you could try this. It may work for you. All right. And these are some DOS programs you can see this doesn't work anymore as well you see here is for any box version one this is version 2d so this won't work you would type your serial number here if you wanted to change it on your phone but these are very old programs there's much better stuff to try okay let's see uh, the, some Emmy boxes came with this program here for the DM tool. Uh, it's got some functions. I can't get it to work. I'll show you why. For example, here you get the network lock. Right. As you can see the phone again turned on, connected. But if you try. See here, read lock, network lock, subset code. If you try to read the lock, please assign database file first. And you have to choose the database file here, which I couldn't find anywhere on the internet. And this only works for some modules. Uh, I have a list here. So the D70 platform, C. 250. These models here are known to work with this program, but as I said, I couldn't find the database, so that wasn't useful for me. So you could uh, change the images, melodies, lots of functions, but it doesn't work. So let's see here. Now this is useful. This is a great program for it. Gate 23. Here it says Amy found and the phone is connected. You can go here to phone, get yeah. phone info. See the red LED there blinked. It says phone state on as the firmware version, A phone model, serial number, and the SIM lock is off because the phone is unlocked if you wanted to if it was locked and you wanted to unlock it you go to phone and go unlock or if you wanted to change the serial code you go here uh, and change the startup logo as well so that is good program to use another one is jemmy there it is this one has lots of functions. So the communication here, yeah. Flex table. Read flex table. Now flex means all the values of the EPROM. So you could change here lots of things. You can add uh, things to your menu 
because the internal structure of the firmware on these phones is pretty much the same, but some phones have more options than others and through here you can activate some of them. You put keypad lock, SMS menu mode, there's lots of things that you can customize your phone here with, like turn things on and off. There's many, many things that you can change. You can change the serial number and the test mode. Read the security code. Oh yeah, here you can change the wake up message. Alright, so there's also this program here, it's called Keyboard Simulator, test it, see who's dialing on the phone, uh, it's got other functions here, you can see about the radio, signal, edit apron bits, uh, flex again, change values in the phone, Battery measurements, radio measurements. Yeah, it's a very useful program to have. There is also this one for changing the serial number. You read the serial number, you can write a new one, clear special code. This is made for American StarTax. CDMA ones. Here you can change the ESN number.
This is the Moto Flex program used for flashing the software you can see here some information about it a serial cable cable pin out here So you would use this phone to load the software for flashing onto the box and then from the box to the phone first cycle the power on and off of your box see emmy box has power cycle please reinitialize the emmy box third click here shows you the version of the software that's on the box this is the latest one and then you would load your flash files here this is you can put language files uh, the software for it let's see let's load something on it here is the software for this model here And it will load onto the RAM memory. After that's been loaded, you click here and it will flash the phone and give you a checksum at the end. You can also change other things here in the app from same as the other programs, but this was mostly used for flashing. And this is for Motorola T205. You connect here. I don't have I don't have that phone to display. So it connect here and you can flash it. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the big Amy box. Take that out and now let's look at row any boxes these two are, as I said uh, they work in the same way see this one works just by taking power from the printer cable the lights on you put the cable inside and let's look at some programs for it row any okay so this is this was the original one this was like the most basic one uh it says emmy host connected phone disconnected so you plug in your phone and you turn it on see the red led lights up it says phone connected master and you give it commands uh read the lock unlock the save slave phone well this phone is unlocked send unlock request form has already been unlocked uh you can change the serial number and flash it it's pretty basic so let's close this then you got a windows interface for this the phone is connected you can unlock it lock it you got uh, found a manual here for a later version of that software but I couldn't find it anywhere if if anyone has this version please share it with me I couldn't find it so a newer version of that windows interface had uh, a lot more options than that 
is the manual for it. But this was also pretty, pretty basic and required more like manual commands. The best program to use with that, this, and this is by far P Master. This one here. This one runs uh, on DOS or Windows. So if you don't have a Windows 98 computer, put this on a bootable USB drive and it will run just fine. So here's the program here. You connect your box. Actually, let's put the other one in. Let's take that. You see, Amy, no phone. Take that out. No Amy. Let's put this one in. Amy, no phone, but this one needs uh, power to connect to the phone. So let's plug that in. Plug the cable in and turn the phone on. See the red LED light up. And you can see here information phone online, uh, version of the software, and the serial number. We got all sorts of commands here. Read the status of the phone. Let's see that. See there. Firmware version, serial number. Uh, it's unlocked. The special code here. It's all gibberish because it's unlocked. Uh, security code one two three four. Uh, actually, this is the pin code. This is security code zero zero zero. Here again, you can change all sorts of things in the app room. Uh, change the logo, the tamper, unlock, dump the EPROM file, save the logo, unlock. Uh, here with the 13 version, you need a test point. Uh, that's where this comes in, or you can make a manual test point. So, this is the best program to use with. Uh, with these boxes here. So let's close that. There's also this adapter here that I made. This was a motor key adapter. I found the schematics for it online, so I made one myself. This plugs at the back of your Amy box. This was made before uh, P Master, right? So before you only had that basic one, the DOS one earlier, that locked, unlocked the phone, changed the serial number, etc. But with this one, you could do a lot more. But after the P Master came out, this kind of became obsolete. But let's look at it anyway. So you would put this one before, uh, between the box and the cable, like so. Like that. And you'd start the motor key program uh, software. This is the last version 97. All right, as you can see, very nice interface here. See the Amy Hose connected, phone connected. Let's cycle the power on and off. This phone is connected, phone powered up. Here you can change the serial number, special codes, all good stuff. Change the logo, uh, unlock version 13 phones, clear tamper phones, uh, read flash. Uh, okay, enable disable menus. See here it reads all the menu options. As you can see here, it's got lots of things that you can activate and deactivate and personalize your phone however you want. Like about languages you can activate and deactivate, call meters. Yeah, lots of things here. Uh, right. And now let's look at the 
Emidroid one. Yeah. Emidroid does not work with the Moto Key Dongo. This only works with Row AME. Emidroid. Uh, you can use P Master with this as with the row emi board. You can see here the program recognizes Emidroid bus. Yeah. Let's see. Press power on off button here. The phone turned on. You can see it's connected and all the information is read there. Press it again and the phone is turned off. They made a similar program for this box called Emidroid. This is the last version, version 28. Very similar to the P Master. Same, let's connect it to the phone. Emidroid register to phone. So you got again here unlock, untamper, read lock, uh, load flex, all different things they can do with it. Let's see, read lock. This value zero zero means it's unlocked. All right, and there's these are also DOS programs that can run from a USB stick. This is a Windows 98 program for it. Doesn't work. Just turn the phone on from here. Right. See, Emidroid registered. Uh, read lock, unlock phone, special code, pretty basic program. You can make this adapter for raw AMI boxes if you want to use AMI droid uh, programs with it. If you put this adapter in there and plug the cable here, the programs will think you have an AMI droid box here, not a raw AMI. So you will be able to use uh, those programs too. Here's the pinout for that adapter here. And that's pretty much it for these. So this will cover most Motorola phones. Uh, as I said, I will try and make a cable for this. But if you don't have any of these, uh, you still have test cards. So let me show you how that works. So you're going to need a gold wafer card. It's either with the chips on it, like so, to simulate a SIM card, or a proper gold wafer card, and program that. There's two types of cards, there's test cards, and then there's clone cards. Clone cards were used to basically transfer all the information from one phone to the other. Back in the day, Motorola had this uh, loyalty program that if your phone broke down you go into the nearest motorola center and they give you a new phone straight away they just put a clone card in there take all the information from your phone put the card into your new phone and transfer it over in a matter of seconds so that's what clone cards were for but you can also use them to unlock uh, your phone because this uh, has been programmed with an unlocked 
status of the phone. So you, when you transfer that uh, to any phone with this type of SIM cards inside, it will make the phone unlocked. So the test card, on the other hand, is to put the phone into test mode and that way you can see security code, security pin and all that good stuff. So let's test it. Uh, this has been programmed as a clone and this one has been programmed by me as a test card. So let's try both functions. First, turn the phone on. Fine. So you put the clone card inside. Asks for pin code one 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 one. Phone will freeze. Take the card out. Put it back in. Now it says clone. To unlock the phone, just dial zero three pound. The phone is now unlocked. To go into test mode. Put the test sim inside, like this, turn the phone on, and hold pound key, test, to see the security code and security pin, put zero, uh, no. Put fifty nine pound. That is the pin. This one's three digits, so zero zero zero. And the security code is fifty eight pound. So that's zero 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 zero. And that's it. And that was it. That's all the information that I wanted to cover here. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Check the links in the description or my eBay shop and uh, see my profile for more videos on these devices and how they work. Thank you for watching.